Hello, my physique here. Today we'll be comparing our glutamine and creatine. Let's get straight to it. Glutamine is so abundant in our body that it makes up 61% of all the amino acids found in the muscle. Does this abundance make glutamine an essential amino acid? Not quite, because that's not the definition of an essential amino acid. Essential amino acids are the ones our bodies cannot produce, and non-essential amino acids are the ones that our bodies can. In fact, we are capable of producing large amounts of glutamine from the reaction between glutamate and ammonium. And thus, glutamine has been considered non-essential amino acids for many years. However, recently, a paper challenged that glutamine should be considered conditionally essential as exercises, illness, disease, starvation, or fasting, etc. significantly depletes the glutamine store so that it is no longer enough to just rely on our bodies to synthesize them. You might not have heard about glutamine, but you have probably heard about creatine as it is one of the most common supplements on the market today. About 95% of the creatine can be found in our muscles, with phosphocreatine being the dominant form. Phosphocreatine provides the phospho group to the ADP to make ATP, which is the energy source we need during exercises. This phosphocreatine energy system has a very rapid onset, and therefore will be the first energy system to kick in and provide us energy during a workout. Creatine can be obtained from food, but require large amounts of food to get the same dose. If you're looking to eat one scoop equivalent of creatine, you'll have to consume this much meat. Creatine comes in many forms, but you will only need creatine monohydrate, the most basic form and the cheapest. Sometimes manufacturers like to add some random parts to the chemical structures, for example, an additional methyl group, and claim additional benefits. Don't fall into that trap. The effect of glutamine on exercise performance is a hot debate because there's only a handful of study on this topic. Therefore, little evidence exists to support the idea that glutamine results in increased muscle mass, reduced body fat, or gains in muscle strength and power. However, glutamine seems to be effective in certain conditions. One study found that glutamine can improve exercise performance and electrolyte uptake in athletes who suffer from mild dehydration. Glutamine supplementation has also shown to raise levels of growth hormones in response to cycling to exhaustion. Growth hormone is a wonderful hormone. Why do I say it's wonderful? Because it does exactly what we want in normal conditions. It decreases adipose tissue, increases bone growth, and increases muscle mass. In contrast, Creatine is one of the most studied supplements out there, alongside whey protein. When creatine is taken, the resynthesis rate of ATP will be increased, meaning that you will have more stamina during the workout, resulting in greater exercise volumes, which is one of the key aspects in stimulating muscle growth. An additional perk is that creatine will draw water into your muscle cells, making them appear bigger and fuller. After all, most of our body is made of water. Interestingly, track and field athletes who consumed 4 grams of glutamine per day for a total of 8 weeks alongside loading and maintenance dose of creatine gained more lean mass than those who use creatine alone. Although this is exciting to report, I hope more studies in the future can confirm the result. In terms of glutamine, right now there are papers showing that the short-term supplementation of 5 to 45 grams per day for 6 weeks have no side effects. Another study shows minimal safety concerns for up to 14 grams a day. However, we need long-term study to examine higher doses, say 45 grams. So right now there is no information supporting the usage of glutamine for long term. If you decide to take a glutamine supplement, it's probably best to start with a conservative dose such as 5 grams. Here are some potential side effects of taking creatine, and one of them is water retention. As we know, creatine tends to draw water into the body, resulting in temporary weight gain. However, please know that this is only water weight and isn't fat. You may also experience reduced joint mobility and muscle cramping. So please take 5-10 to 10 minutes before your workout to warm up properly to avoid injuries. If you decide to do the fast loading described later, you may experience some bloating. Some claim that taking creatine will result in hair loss, however, there have been no solid evidence in support of this. Glutamine is also important for gut barrier maintenance, and researchers are looking into whether it can be important for diseases caused by leaked guts, such as Hashimoto's. 
Glutamine is also involved in immune cell functions, glucose formation, water transport, neurotransmission, and more. Interestingly, researchers have been using creatine to treat certain brain disorders, congestive failures, and other conditions. Early results of these studies show promises. Topical creatine may also be used to treat aging skin as well. However, these evidences are not yet conclusive. L-glutamine is present in almost all the proteins we eat, and our diet is typically equivalent to 3 to 6 grams a day. As mentioned previously, studies on glutamine have used a wide range of doses, from 5 grams per day all the way up to 45 grams per day, and have found no safety concerns. Typically, our glutamine supplements follow 5 grams to 14 grams per day, so please follow your label in this regard. Additionally, it's recommended to take our glutamine right before your meals to better the absorption. Creatine dosing has two phases, the loading phase and the maintenance phase. You can either do a 5-day of fast loading followed by a maintenance dose or just start with maintenance dose, and that is the slow loading. For fast loading, as the name suggests, will allow you to saturate your creatine stores faster. However, it comes with more side effects as mentioned above, whereas the slow loading will saturate your creatine stores slower, meaning it will take longer to see benefits but with little to no side effects. In terms of fast loading, you will be taking one scoop of creatine, roughly 5 grams, for 3 to 4 times a day for 5 to 7 days, then follow up with a maintenance dose of 5 grams per day. Try to take it 30 minutes before meals to reduce bloating. For slow loading, you can just start with 5 grams per day and keep taking it. A creatine cycle should last 6 to 8 weeks, after which you can pause for 2 to 4 weeks and repeat the cycle again. 5 grams per day for up to 18 weeks have shown no side effects but the cycle I listed above is usually recommended. So would you rather take L-glutamine or creatine? Or would you rather take both? Let me know in the comment below. If you haven't subscribed, make sure to subscribe because I'll be talking about other supplements in the future. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like the video as well. For those of you who are interested, I have compared BCAAs with casein in the past and I'll put a link up somewhere on this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. MP signing out.